to another episode of Hidden Stories Healed Now, where we provide joy and hope to others. Today, I am so blessed to have with me Marie Hunter. She's going to tell you a little bit about her journey from pregnancy forward and some of the challenges and decisions that she had to make in moving forward. Welcome, Marie. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure is all mine. Would you please share with the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Marie Hunter. I have three boys. I'm the president of KRG Fuel and Energy. And I will tell you that our journey has been quite an interesting one and a challenging one. Um, it's a very non-glamorous business, but we've had to figure out how to make it, you know, our own because typically you don't see us in this space. And so I will say that over time we've had to, um, tr try to figure out how to become disruptors in the industry. It's antiquated, male dominated, um, all the things that if you are willing to try to challenge yourself, <laughs> you'll get that challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say that how it started is just, you know, it's not your typical story, but you know, I embrace the story. Okay. Um, so I used to work in the textile industry for a while, for about six years, and I was having my second child at the time. Um, I was feeling like, oh man, the second baby is gonna gonna kill me. I don't know how my job's gonna feel about this. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hopefully I'll still have a job after he comes. And little did I know that I was kind of, um, I had an insight into my, my fate. Wow. So after um, my second child, he was about eight weeks old. I went back to work and I started to feel a little funny things going around work and I got let go. Uh, and that was during the recession. Mm. I had two kids, an eight week old baby and no job. You would think that, you, you know, people would freak out, cry, you know, go into a temper tantrum. I decided that I was not going to have sadness. I was going to embrace it and say, hey, you know, if this is the path that God wants me to be on. I told him I didn't want to be in that job anymore. So he said, uh, well, I guess uh, here you go. <laughs> and so um, I, my father at the time, he was in the petroleum business and he was trying to re restart an old business that he had. And I said, hey, I think that maybe I should help you. Maybe I can learn the business. Uh, uh, I'm your daughter. I won't steal from you. I won't do anything foul. I, <laughs> I'll learn it and I'll help you. And uh, he said, okay. And I was like, I can't believe what I'm doing. But I felt this desire and this yearning to, to help my family for some reason. Now, I have a performing arts background. <laughs> I was a dancer, <laughs> uh, a, da a dance instructor. I did film and television. I oh, thought I was wow. going to be Debbie Allen. Yes. Um, <laughs> so how to make this transition into this foreign industry. I, I didn't know how that was going to succeed, but I did know that I had to help my family. That's what I knew. That was a, that was a calling like none other. I, I just knew it was, I was put on this earth to help my family. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started. We tried to come up with names. So I said, daddy, well, some of the most successful businesses, who are they named after? Well, they're families. So at the time, my son was Robbie and my little baby at the time, he's now 14, oh my gosh, hit, that's Kingston. And my dad was George. So we came up with KRG Oil Company. Mm. Uh, who would have known that years later, another one was gonna sneak in there by <laughs> the name of Levi. So I, I didn't have room for him. So. I, the story is that he's the L in the LLC, and that's my story. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> um, but that's how we started in the industry. That is exactly what happened. Um, it became a family business, and we have just grown it from there. I actually run the company now without my dad. Wow. Yes. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That is phenomenal. Thank that you is so phenomenal. Much. And it's interesting that you listen, something pulled you and you went, you know, um, and you decided that you wanted to help your family. But let's talk about the emotions at the time that you got let go. What were you feeling? You get back from maternity leave, you're working and they say, 
your position has been eliminated. What was your immediate reaction? Was it, okay, it's going to be okay? What did you really go through before you got to the point it was going to be okay? Well, at first I was angry. Mm -hmm. That's an honest emotion. I was like, I have given six years of my life to this company. I have helped them grow in their departments, help them recognize a demographic that they didn't even know they had, you know, making them millions of dollars. They knew I was having another child. Like, how could this happen to me? That was anger. I, I felt it was audacious. I felt like I had, you know, built a good rapport with the company and the family. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a little angry, but I did not want that anger to steal the joy and the opportunity that I didn't realize was, you know, an opportunity in disguise. And I said, Hey, wait a minute, Marie, you know, this is going to be a really great opportunity because no one can determine your worth. No one's ever going to be able to determine my value, my salary, my anything. And so the next weeks ahead, I just decided to really embrace the new journey. I was still dancing. So I still had like something that kept me grounded. I still got to go to the dance studio and um, I was very involved with the church and was a choreographer there. But I will say that it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I honestly say that I didn't shed a tear. I was angry, but I decided to embrace it. It has changed the trajectory of my life and our path. Well, you know, we're gonna take a station break and I'd like to pick up from that point when we come back. We'll be right back. Every story has a hidden element that is not often shared. Hidden Stories, Healed Now with host Vicki Wright Hamilton, seeks to share the hidden gems in real life experiences. Our guests are ordinary people sharing their stories of overcoming insurmountable odds while providing hope and inspiration. Welcome back. So, you know, you decided to embrace something that was hard um, and that you were going to move forward. You made a comment before the station break that you were not going to let someone else dictate to you. And so this feeling of I need to help my family and you decided I'm going to go to my dad. He's got this business he's trying. I don't have a job. So let me go try to help him. Talk to me about the emotions of beginning this process with your family. Because we know we all love our family. There can always be challenges and trying to work together can also bring other things. So how did you actually go about this dealing with, I'm I'm a mom again, this newborn, et cetera. Did you find out that there was going to be more um, flexibility doing this? Talk a little bit about that. I would say, honestly, I went through a range of emotions. There was a little bit of fear because I was walking into, you know, uncharted territory. Honestly, I thought diesel fuel and gasoline were the same thing. I know some people are like, how, how in the heck? But no, really, if you, if you're just programmed to only put gasoline in your car, you really don't know the differences. I had to learn terminology. I had to, I, another thing, um, was trying to, trying when networking with people, I had to, in the beginning to get people to talk to me, say, hi, I'm Georgia's daughter. So like mm-hmm. being in his shadow mm-hmm. and trying and not then, you know, for people to not think I was a secretary or the assistant or, mm-hmm. you know, I was the owner, but I still had to try to prove myself. So I would say that there was some fear, some frustration. I did have some liberation with being there for my kids. Mm-hmm. That's something I had never really experienced. I mean, we think that we're parenting. But when you drop your ch- children off from 6.30 in the morning to 6 o'clock at night, it feels like parenting when you come home. But if you do the math, you're only with your kids a few hours a day. And I struggled with the first day of, oh, my gosh, what do I do with these children? <laughs> because I was dropping them off. Even mm-hmm. though I was mothering, I, you know, but that was on the weekends, really, if you put it into perspective. So I had to deal with that. And then I had to deal with it's such an intimidating world. Are people going to talk to me? Mm -hmm. And I dealt with 
okay, I had been so confident in the in my other, you know, areas of expertise, confident in dance, confident in film. I had no knowledge in this arena and had to talk to people using terms that I did not really entirely understand. There were times of frustration with mommy and then trying to be business owner during the day. Hey, I know you guys see me, but I'm 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 working <laughs> right now. There was that challenge. And then there was the challenge of the father-daughter dynamic. Mm -hmm. I would call sometimes to speak with my father to talk about a business question and get a response in a daddy question. I mean, a da daddy, daddy response. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, I'm not calling as your daughter. I'm calling as your business partner. Mm -hmm. And then there was the whole dynamic of if I got frustrated or he got frustrated that we're not talking to each other in the spirit of father-daughter. Mm -hmm. It needs to be business owner to business owner. And those times were challenging. I really had to preface at times, say, hi, this is a, a business question. This is, please don't answer me as a dad. Mm -hmm. I need you to give me. And, th and that, that was a struggle. I think eventually we got a good rhythm going. And I will say that now my father is, uh, he's still the unicorn of the unicorn of all unicorns to me. He's still my daddy. He still helps consult our business. I still need him sometimes. But I do believe that our father-daughter relationship is even better than it was. And I and I really appreciate that. And if that's if this is the conduit that it had to happen to, you know, for that to happen, then I, I'm very accepting of that. You know, it's it's interesting when you talk about these challenges. So we talk about challenges. Can you give the audience two or three tips of how you dealt with them. What were some of those solutions? Because those feelings are real. Yes. They are real. The challenges you went through are real. You felt them, you went through them. How did you solve them? Can you give them a few tips on what you did to overcome them? Yes, I am gonna say, <laughs> number one, a lot of prayer. You have to pray about this stuff because you you don't know who to go to sometimes. And really just praying for peace so that you can find the answers. Sometimes I would pray for God to just talk through someone or something. I didn't care what it was, just so I can get an answer. So a lot of prayer. I would listen to um, motivational uh, speaking. We don't know at times how we're going to get through something, but listening to others that have been through similar journeys mm -hmm. really helps us figure out how we're gonna deal with this. Which is what this show is all about. Exactly. And aligning yourself with people or a network that has similar experiences. Because when you are an entrepreneur, you can feel very lonely, like no one else understands you. And in order for that feeling to have, I don't know, some resolve, you have to align yourself with people that understand what you're going through so that you can talk to them and they go, oh, th oh, this is what happened to me. This is how I got through this because it will be so much more challenging without that network of people. Business development, a lot of times you peer learning, you learn the best from your peers. We're at, sometimes we're so heavily into our businesses and what we're doing into our lives. We really can't see, but other people can. And so if you if you have those good people around mm -hmm. you, you can get through it a lot better. And I will say that it is necessary to survive. It's necessary for your mental health. It's necessary for your wellness to surround yourself by people who have like minds. Well, we're going to take a station break. When we come back, we're going to see if there's a question or a comment from the audience. We'll be right back. Every story has a hidden element that is not often shared. Hidden Stories, Healed Now with host Vicki Wright Hamilton, seeks to share the hidden gems in real life experiences. Our guests are ordinary people sharing their stories of overcoming insurmountable odds while providing hope and inspiration. Welcome back. So, you know, we talked a lot about um, in the previous you know, segments about your your desires and, and your need. And I really like what you said in the last segment that daddy, daughter, right? And that having to preface that. Is it still that way today? Do you still have to preface? No. 
<laughs> <laughs> Properly so. <laughs> so we have growth. Yes, right? absolutely. We have a lot of growth um, in terms of getting there. And you should be very, very proud of yourself. Thank Learning you. a brand new industry, taking something that could have been very bad, turning it into something that you now are the CEO of. You know, look in that mirror. I am the CEO. You know, you are the CEO. And as you said, there's not many of us that are in this in, that are in this industry. Right. And I love the fact that you um, talked about learning from your peers and putting yourself in that community. Mm -hmm. I think community is so important. Um, there's a lot of mastermind groups. I know I'm a part of one for entrepreneurs. There's a lot of mastermind groups out there because everybody can't be the best at everything. And when you are an entrepreneur, you got to do it all. So you may not be the best strategist. You need to find somebody who is. You might not be the best marketer. You need to find somebody who is. Right. You need to get that that um, uh, energy and information from those experts. You know. Right. So um, I I truly am proud. Um, of where you are and the things that you have done and to be such a beautiful dancer my <laughs> gosh you know and to act and all the rest of it right Thank being you. on tv <laughs> the whole thing so you bring a whole package let's see if we have a question or a comment from the audience yes hi thank you so much um what would you say is the number one thing that you've done in this whole process that you've that you did that you are still doing today i would say the number one thing that I did and still do, it might seem that it's a small thing, but it's not, it's very large. It was, I decided to not stay in my feelings. People know that term, but do you really understand that term and what it means to stay in your feelings? I realized that staying in my feelings caused a lot of issue, bumps in the road, I couldn't get over myself. And I typically didn't think I was that way until I started to realize what was happening. Something bad would happen and I just would stay there. It would linger. It would linger on for days. And I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. And I realized that if you, if you know how to quickly get out of your feelings, you can get, you can get more things resolved. It's very, <laughs> It's a very simple concept that I think everybody needs to adopt because it could be the matter. If you are going to be an entrepreneur and you are uh, on that path to growth, you have to understand that you're going to be faced with so much adversity. Like you're going to go into a meeting. I have been at a meeting. It's a $2 million deal for them to say, oh, we just decide we're not going to do this anymore. The old me. Boy, I went home, got under the covers, probably flicked a few, few people off on the way home. No, really, <laughs> gotten really upset instead of going, okay. I had to learn that that is just part of life. And if I, if I, didn't, if I didn't take that approach, um, I, we would not have the growth and success that we have now. And we wouldn't be able to deal with so much bad. My, our business has been in ebbs and flows through the beginning of the time. And if you are a business owner and you want success, you have to know that you're going to have failure. If you're in your failings, you won't, it, it, you will fail and that'll be it. And you won't try again. It will be harder, more difficult to get up and try again. You have to just know how to get through those moments. And, and so, I would say that what I do is I just don't stay in my feelings as long. And sometimes I talk to my husband, I'm like, in my feelings today? Do you think I'm in my feelings right now? And he'll say, no, I think you're good. And sometimes, because I know it's not as natural for me, if you're, if you have to know your personality. I will do things to quickly get out of my feelings. I'll go take a walk real quick. I gotta throw on some music. I will dance in the mirror. <laughs> I will dance in the mirror and dance it out. I, I you have to just, Get it out of your system quickly so you can move on because you don't want to stifle the next big idea staying in your feelings or the next great opportunity. So I will say that's what I still do. I figure out how to quickly, you know, transition into whatever it is. That's the next greatest thing. 
I think that's really, really good advice because we all have to have something that's our calmness. You know, some people it's, I need to go to a beach. I need to see some water. Some people I need to exercise. Some of it is dance. Some of it is music. You know, uh, whatever that thing is that can get you out of it so that you can overcome. Exactly. Um, you know, so that we can get the, the spirits and the mindsets to say something positive, not negative. Right. Because there's going to be bad things that happen all the time. And it's like, okay, what lesson am I here to learn? Um, you talked about, you know, failing. And I have this thing about the word fail. It's a first attempt in learning. You didn't fail. You were learning something for the first time. It only becomes a failure if you continue to do the same thing over and over again and you didn't change. Absolutely. Right. So as you begin these learnings and you learn something and you know, OK, I can do this differently. I can think about this differently. I'm sure those feelings showed up at home, too, with the kids and the husband and exactly. all of that when you're in those feelings. And a lot of times we want to hold other people accountable when we're the ones that are in our feelings and starting it and not even recognizing it, right? Because yes. we're not aware. And so that self-awareness becomes so important in terms of, you know, am I acting that way? I think it's funny that you <laughs> ask your husband, how did you get your husband to, to get on the same page to help you with this? Did you just go to him and say, look, I'm understanding that, you know, I feel like I'm in my feelings a lot. How did you, how did you get him to help you? Yeah, because sometimes he would see, you know, he would at the time, he, my husband now works in the business, but at the time he, <laughs> he was a business maker uh, at Wells Fargo and he would come home and I'd just be in the worst mood. <laughs> and, and I would be like, yeah, I just had a bad day. I don't want to talk to anybody. So, you know, you have to do, and, and he would say, well, what happened? And then he's trying to, you know, coach me through what happened. And then that's when I really started to, I was like, I really get my feelings. And I, I didn't like that trait about me because I was so used to, you know, just better qualities that I like to embrace. And I had to learn that's what I do. But relative to, hey, help me figure this out. I realized that there's a connection between quickly getting out of your feelings and recognizing the divine in everything. If you can recognize the divine in everything, you will stay out your feelings a little less because that diversion needed to happen, obviously, so you could learn, right? So I said, hey, I got a call today about X. I'm going to accept the divine because obviously, you know, this is happening for a reason. And instead of me getting upset about it, I'm just going to try to figure out how to, how to resolve it and what the next thing is going to be. Maybe I was not supposed to be there. What if the $2 million deal was, you know, it didn't work out because there's a $20 million deal. You have, you have to know like where that, where did that, where that's coming from. The quicker you get out, recognize the divine. Okay. What am I going to learn? How am I acting? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to get a girlfriend, somebody check your mind, my feelings today mm -hmm. and, um, and quickly move on. Cause there's, there's typically something really great that comes out of depression. So. You know, I think we've gotten some great tips today and, and I couldn't agree with you more. Um, truly getting to have that self-reflection and get out of your feelings and understand so that you can have a better response. I'd like to ask my audience to thank Marie Hunter for being here today. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Hidden Stories Healed Now, where we share so that you can have hope and joy in the end. See you next time.